A lot of people come and go, you know, they come and go, come and go. I said, what am I doing here all these years? I says, I'm still here. <laughs> Bayek of Wiper Lake counts herself lucky, and there's no question she's beat some significant odds. These are the cupcakes we're going to make to take over there. For in a way, she's won the lottery, succeeding in what less than 0.02% of Americans experience, becoming a centenarian. I miss it. <laughs> With a quick wit and a curiosity of others, she appears younger than 103. You look so young. I've been active all my life. And for a woman living very much in the present... I never look for the worst. I always look for positive. It's only natural for her to reflect on her storied past. Growing up with four siblings on the Iron Range, she became a nurse and joined the Army with her sister during World War II, crossing the Atlantic 24 times on a hospital ship, caring for casualties of war. I'll never forget the last day on the ship. We had this beautiful young man. I was working on a patient at the time. We had steel beds, you know, double-deckers. Mm -hmm. I was working with a patient on top, and this young kid was called, pulling that we wore slacks, calling for Mama, Mama. I got to him, and he died, just like that. She returned home and met her future husband of 52 years, Edward. I had to think about it. They always do. They moved to White Bear Lake in 1955, where he was city manager for 20 years. They had a son, Mark, who helps care for Rose now, including driving her to her appointments. Rose stopped driving at age 99 after she was hit by another driver, dispirited by her loss of freedom. It's of independence. I like to be independent, but I'm not anymore. I'm dependent on what is available. Her loss of independence does not equate to a loss of engagement, and wherever she goes, she's greeted like a dignitary. They said you're quite the celebrity. You had the, you had the camera crew there, and they were ready for everything. I've had them all day long, I know. Oh, good for you. Where so we got your sweets. Oh, here's your cupcakes as usual. Thanks. You could put them up. Yeah, put them out on the table out there for you. As she settles in at the annual Night to Unite party at Podvin Park, the young remember Rose for more than simply her old age. I remembered last year the, the cupcakes with what were on the cupcakes, James? Yes, they're Jelly here, beans. they're here. How are you? <laughs> He's grown a bit. Steve Gelderman has been Rose's next door neighbor for 18 years. She's probably one of the most amazing people I've ever met. I was in law enforcement for 30 years and I met a lot of people, needless to say. And she's very high up on the list of unique individuals. Like many in the community, he considers her a treasure, bridging the gap between what was and what is. Mary Helmrich, who helps organize the neighborhood's party, says Rose's stories help the younger generation put history into perspective. It's nice when you have somebody that has these stories and has this history that can bring that in and, and tell it to the younger folks and they, and they can relate to that. I mean, when you hear stories about, you know, World War II, you know, you see it in a book and it's like, oh, okay. But if you have somebody that's actually been there, I mean, that's huge. And then that brings the community closer, you know, because everybody gets to share those stories and I think that's awesome. But for all of Rose's notoriety, she remains humble, a bit embarrassed by the attention. <laughs> there you are with that bubble. <laughs> Having lived a life of service, Rose has done well adapting to change, helping her survive as she's experienced most all of her family and friends die. And for those closest to her, they count every day with Rose a blessing. She's too precious and we need to enjoy her while she's here.